So the third speaker will be uh, me. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jiayuan Mao. I'm a PhD student at, uh, at MIT. My, um, my advisors are professors uh, George Tenenbaum and Leslie Calvin. So uh, my uh, main research interests are in neurosymbolic models for uh, visual reasoning, uh, common sense uh, reasoning, and also planning. So um, today I'm going to present this idea of using neurosymbolic frameworks for visual concept learning and visual reasoning. It's going to be a more uh, technical um, talk uh, compared with the great talk presented by uh, uh, the previous speakers. Um, so here the high level idea is to combine strengths of deep models for visual recognition and uh, more generally pattern recognition uh, with symbolic approaches for processing queries and perform reasoning. Uh, so I will present how we can build um, bottom-up uh, neurosymbolic models for visual reasoning, such as answering visually grounded questions, and how to use high-level supervisions, such as uh, uh, you know, uh, question answers, to supervise the learning of uh, low-level uh, recognition tasks in a top-down manner. So um, to start with, uh, I would like to uh, start to talk by introducing the problem of uh, visual concept learning and define what it, what it means by concept. So given this input image, so human can instantaneously recognize there are objects in the scene, and uh, we can also associate you know, various visual concepts with the object appearance. This includes colors, shapes, types of materials, and so on. So this recognized visual concept supports our reasoning over this image in various types. As an example, to answer this question, what's the shape of the red object? we could first associate the word red with the color property of the second object and uh, answer this question by querying the shape of the second object. This gives us the answer sphere. So beyond just answering visually grounded questions, uh, visual concepts also support visual reasoning in various forms. Like we can write down image captions, uh, like there's a green cube behind the red cube, so a red sphere in this, uh, in this image. And uh, we can also perform uh, instance retrieval, you know, we can retrieve all the rubber sphere from a large scale data set. So we first review some prior arts uh, for visual reasoning in the visual question answering setting. So a typical favor of these models is to use an end to end neural architecture to predict the answer to the question, given the question as well as the image. So um, there are essentially two things to be learned in this loop by this neural network, this end-to-end -end neural network. The first thing is the concept, such as the meaning of red, the actual association between different words and different visual appearance, different visual features. And the second is the ability to reason, such as to count the number of objects or comparing the size of different objects and so on. So in such end-to-end -end design, these two things, the concept learning and the reasoning are entangled with each other. So this results in that the learned concept cannot be easily transferred to other tasks, such as to write down image captions or perform instance retrieval. So there have been some recent trials on ex explicitly incorporating concepts in visual reasoning. The NSVQA framework proposed by E and his colleague uses first a scene parsing subroutine to extract abstract scene representation of this image. It first detects all the objects in the scene and extract their attributes, such as colors, shapes, sorry, excuse me, types of materials, and so on. So meanwhile, it would like to translate the input sentence, in, which is in natural language, into logical programs with a hierarchical layout. In this case, the question, what's the shape of the red object, can be translated into a two-step program. The generated program together with the abstract thing representation will be sent to a symbolic program executor. So this program, this program executor will execute this program. First, it finds the red object in the scene by querying the color of different objects. And secondly, it answers the question by querying the shape of the uh, object, which gives us the answer sphere. So during training, we need two annotations. The first one is the annotation for various types of visual concepts, including colors, shapes, and so on. And also, we need the program notation, that is the, uh, the latent logic behind each question. So this seriously restricts its application in real-world scenarios, where it, neither of the concept annotation for natural images or program annotation for natural language could be easily obtained. So in this paper, uh, or in, like in the, in, the, in the following uh, 
of the talk. So I'm going to present this idea of joint learning visual concept and semantic parsing from natural supervision, where no explicit human notations for concepts or programs will be needed. So this is analogical to human concept learning. Um, the visual perception module learns visual concepts based on the language description of an object being referred to. Meanwhile, the learned visual concept will facilitate the parsing new sentences. So again, we start from this concrete example. So given this input image and the question, we first run object detectors to detect the objects in the scene and extract uh, the visual representation for each of the objects. And then we use semantic parsers to translate the input question into a symbolic program. Each of the concepts in this question, such as the word red, is associated with an vector embedding. A neural symbolic reasoning module takes the visual representation, concept embeddings, and the parsed programs as input and gives us the answer to the question. So there are essentially three things to be learned within this loop. The first one is the visual representation, and the second one is the concept embedding. So these two parts essentially forms the concept learning part. And there's also a third part, which is the program learning part. That is how to translate the natural language uh, into some uh, computer um, understandable uh, program structure. So let's focus, let's first focus on how we can um, um, learn visual concepts based on the programs uh, that we have already recovered from the natural language. So here we first assume that a latent program has already been recovered by our semantic parsing module. So the perception module learns visual concepts based on the language description. So um, starting from the first filter write operation, so for each of the objects in this scene, we use a small neural network to project its visual representation into a color space. And uh, the concept red will also correspond to a vector embedding in this color space. We can compare the cosine similarity between the color of objects as well as the vector embedding of the, this word red. So in this case, uh, the similarity between the word red and the, the color property of the first object is very low, while uh, the, uh, the, uh, the second object ha has a very high similarity uh, with the word red. So in this case, the second object will be classified as a red object. And this will be the, the input uh, for the second step of this program. So again, to query the shape of this object, we first use another uh, small neural network to translate uh, the original general uh, visual representation into a shape space. And also, uh, each, uh, each, uh, each shape concept in the in our data set, including cube, sphere, and cylinder, will correspond to different um, vector embeddings in this shape space. So by comparing um, the similarity, cosine similarity between the shape representation of the second object and the vector representation of different shapes, we can classify the object uh, we can classify the shape of this object. So in this case, give, give us the answer sphere. So in this neural symbolic reasoning process, all operations are executed based on the similarity between object attributes uh, and uh, different concepts in this latent uh, embedding space. Thus, the derived answer will become fully differentiable with respect to the visual representations of objects as well as the concept embeddings. So during training, we can use the ground truth answer to supervise the learning and use a standard backpropagation process uh, as the training algorithm. So this shows us how we can use the recovered program to supervise the learning of visual concepts. So now we look at the other direction, which is how can the learned visual concept facilitate parsing new sentences? So during training, um, for our semantic parsing, we can sample multiple candidate programs from this parser. In this example, let's say two candidate examples, sorry, two candidate programs are sampled. We also show the semantic interpretation of each of the program in natural language. The semantic of the first program is, so what is the shape of the red object, which is the correct one. And uh, the semantics of the second program is, uh, is there any other thing that has the same shape as the red object? So again, the concept in the question, uh, like the word red is associated with vector embeddings. The next step is to execute all these candidate programs uh, with our neuro symbolic reasoning engine. 
So um, based on the visual representation and also the concept embeddings. So the first program gave us the answer sphere, which is correct compared with the ground truth answer. So here we can label um, the first program as a positive example. Meanwhile, we can also execute the second program, which will give us the answer no, since there's only one sphere in the C. However, um, the answer no is incorrect if you compare it with the ground truth answer to the original question in natural language. So here, the second program will be marked as a negative example. So based on the execution results and how it compared with the ground truth answer, um, we, can, uh, we can use this ground truth we can use uh, whether the answer is correct as a reward um, to the semantic parsing module and apply a reinforced algorithm to train the semantic parser. So this will close the loop of concept learning and semantic parsing. So in this uh, neural symbolic concept learning framework, these two modules are jointly learned only by looking at uh, images and reading paired questions and uh, answers. So no explicit annotations for visual concepts or um, the program structure for different questions will be needed. Also, it is worth mentioning that to facilitate such joint learning, we also draw some inspiration from how children learn their visual concepts. So our model actually starts from learning all just object level concepts by looking at very simple things and reading very simple questions. It then uh, use the learned knowledge to interpret referential expressions based on the learned object level concepts in order to learn relational concepts such as uh, spatial relationship like behind or left off. Finally, uh, we extended it to learn from more complex things and more complex questions. So our approach brings multiple advantages over prior arts. First, if we just look at the query accuracy on the standard test by clever data set for real reasoning, uh, our model reaches a state of the performance compared with other baselines. Moreover, our model is more data efficient. Uh, using only 10% of the training data, uh, our model can achieve a performance of 98.9 in query accuracy, surpassing all baselines by at least, uh, by at least uh, 14%. So uh, this new symbolic concept learning framework can also be uh, extended to natural images and natural questions. Here we show some examples on this uh, VQS dataset proposed uh, by again and all in 2017. So, and also we show the execution trace for it. So to answer the question, what's the color of the fire hydrant? First, we recover the semantic program behind this uh, question, which is first we filter out the fire hydrant and then we query its color. So uh, the execution of the first step gave us the uh, fire hydrant and then the execution of the second step gave us uh, the answer uh, yellow. And uh, also we can use um, this, um, this, uh, this framework to learn uh, how to count objects in the scene, like uh, how, to, how many uh, zebras are there. Uh, and uh, first, uh, again, we filled out all the zebras in the scene and then we just perform a counting over how many objects are selected, which gave us the answer three. So the learned concepts can be easily transferred to other tasks. Here we show some examples of instance retrieval given just object level concepts and also relational concepts on this VQS dataset like horse or person or more complex, uh, like a, a person or a skateboard. So in terms of the accuracy, uh, our model is able to achieve a comparable accuracy with other baselines um, for visual question answering. So, uh, so far we have seen how these neural symbolic frameworks can support visual question answering. But before ending this story, I also want to briefly mention how we can extend this idea uh, to the domain of writing captions for images or retrieve images based on the natural language description. So um, one example I uh, have here is this uh, neural symbol image capture retrieval uh, framework. Uh, the idea is quite simple if you, if you have understand it, uh, the previous approach quite well. So similar to the visual question answering case, uh, we want to uh, we first parse uh, this input sentence into a symbolic structure, uh, structural representation. Uh, here you can interpret it as uh, like object level, uh, object level concepts and attribute level concepts and the relational concept which form some graphical structure. And uh, we want to make a factorized alignment between different components in the sentence uh, with their corresponding regions in the image. So again, looking at the test result on the standard test bed, the MS Coco image recaption retrieval dataset, our model, namely the uh, uh, unified visual uh, semantic embedding, can achieve uh, a state of art performance uh, on the task of image to sentence retrieval or sentence to image retrieval. 
those are uh, just standard test metrics for image capture tasks. And uh, there's also a bonus uh, advantage of our, uh, of our framework. So uh, another benefit is that by enforcing such kind of factorized alignment uh, between uh, the visual inputs as well as uh, different components in the text, like the object properties or their relationships, our model have better robustness. So one way to test it is to generate adversarial captions in the following way. So uh, this is based on the uh, work uh, published uh, in 2018 by Shi and me and uh, uh, other colleagues. So um, given this input image and also a corresponding caption, so we first extract um, the entities in this caption and also the relationship between them. And then we can generate uh, sort of the unmatched sentences by changing only a small part of the sentence but making the meaning of the sentence completely different. So for example, um, the, we, can, we can change the second word of the sentence into dogs, which were, uh, so that the caption would become three dogs and uh, a rhino uh, grazed from trees, which is uh, absolutely incorrect if you compare it with the, uh, with the image we are looking at. However, if you, if you add these captions, these adversarial captions into the data set, we will notice a significant performance drop in performance for uh, previous methods, such as the uh, state of the art method like a VSE++. Um, so, however, we, we can see that our model, uh, the model with factorized alignment, has uh, the least performance drop. Um, here, uh, I also want to mention this baseline method called uh, VSEC, whose idea is to augment the training sets uh, with such adversarial uh, captions. This idea sometimes is uh, referred, at, referred to as you know, uh, adversarial training. But here we show that even without explicit of the adversarial training, by incorporating such inductive bias that uh, the sentence as well as the things can be decomposed into object and, and uh, their relationships, uh, by making such factorized alignment between vision and text, we can still achieve very good uh, robustness. So uh, now let's move a step further towards a more general visually grounded learning system. So um, beyond you know, just recognizing object properties and their relationships. So here we start uh, by introducing some tasks that is beyond, the, uh, beyond just answering descriptive properties of ob objects uh, based on the image. So the, uh, the task that I want to present here is uh, some sort of like abstract reasoning task. So to give you some, uh, to give you some intuition, so humans learn their knowledge about concepts through visual experiments. Um, but go, so we're going back to, uh, to this first example we show in our slides. So we can recognize objects and their properties such as colors and shapes and materials. But meanwhile, beyond just performing visual recognition, humans also understand the underlying relationship between all these concepts. For example, we understand that red and green, they actually describe the same property of objects. And we call this property color. We also understand that um, the word cube and the block de describe the same property of objects. And uh, moreover, they are kind of synonym to each other because they both, uh, they're both talking about like a cubic like things. So, um, so while the visual concept have enabled us to reason about the image, we can also reason about these meta concepts. That is uh, the relational concepts about concepts. For example, in this case, we can answer the question um, do red and the green describe the same property of object? And the answer is yes. So uh, in this paper, I collaborated with Han, Chuang, and uh, other colleagues. So we built a series of new data set by augmenting existing visual reasoning data set with these meta concept questions. So for example, on the clever data set, we add new questions that queries the relationship between red and green or cube and block. And we, also, we have also extended the GQA data set proposed by Hans and Manning. Um, by adding, uh, you know, uh, whether red and yellow describe the same property of objects or, uh, uh, or about the hyperoneum or hyponym um, uh, relationship between different concepts in this data set. So <clears throat> we show full two advantages of integrating concept learning and meta concept learning or meta concept reasoning. So first, let's talk about how concept learning, specifically the, the visual grounding of concept learning, can help meta concept generalization. A quick example I, I'm going to show here is that um, as humans, after learning the concept airplane and the concept plane uh, by you know, um, airplane is a synonym of plane because both concepts share a similar appearance. 
And in this case, uh, we are actually actually able to read about the relationship between the symbols, which are visually grounded. So similarly, uh, if we understand that uh, uh, what is by red and what is by yellow, and we can answer the question, uh, do red and yellow describe the same property of the object? And the answer is yes, because we classify whether an object is uh, red or yellow um, based, on, um, based on the hue of the objects. So the other direction is even more interesting. So uh, looking at this image uh, and uh, the corresponding questions like, uh, uh, is there any cube? And uh, the answer is yes. And if I also tell you block is a synonym of cube, and based on these two knowledge, um, can you ask the following question? Is there any block? So suppose they have never seen any visual instance of, uh, of the associated with the concept block, but you can, you can understand that by connecting it by connecting this new concept block to another concept, which is cube that you have already learned before based on your visual experience. And also, um, here I show some examples of uh, how meta concept can help us, help us to uh, resolve the ambiguity of the set or the bias of the set. So I will show you uh, two examples of cube. And uh, now I'm asking you, uh, whether the image on the right uh, contains a cube, contains a cube. So actually, the answer is ambiguous because both images that I show on the left, they are both green cubes. So if you are going to learn the, the visual ground of the word cube, it, it can be associated with the shape of the object or uh, the color of the object, or maybe just both. So, however, if you add uh, meta concept questions or meta concept knowledge into your learning system, then such ambiguity can be resolved. Because you know that cube and sphere describe the same property of objects, then you know you should classify whether an object being cube or not based on uh, its shape property instead of its color property. So this will give us give you the answer uh, right after the question, which is uh, yes. So um, now we present how we can extend the previous uh, mentioned framework in neural symbolic concept learning also to uh, perform uh, this reasoning about meta concepts. So uh, again, starting from the uh, to, uh, starting from this uh, uh, visually grounded question answering example. So given the input question, we perform object detection and feature extraction uh, to get an object centric visual representation. And also we can parse this input question into a semantic program where each of the concepts are associated with different, uh, with different vector embeddings in some latent spaces. And uh, based on this, um, uh, this visual representation, concept embedding, and also the semantic program, we can perform uh, uh, question answering, which give us answer sphere. Um, to extend this framework, in order to answer uh, such a meta concept reading question, what we call in our paper, again, we can semantic parse uh, this, in, this input sentence into a semantic program. In this specific example, the, the derived program will be quite simple because uh, the goal is to verify whether red and green, they, uh, they describe the same property, uh, they describe the same kind of property uh, of an object. So again, here, the, uh, the concept red, the word red and green, they are also associated with different vector embeddings um, in this concept embedding space. And uh, again, we apply this neural symbolic reasoning framework to answer these meta concept reasoning questions. Uh, in this specific case, so we use a meta, what we call like a meta verified small neural network, uh, to, uh, uh, which takes the input in, uh, to take the concept embedding of the word red and also the concept embedding of the word green to answer this question, uh, which uh, give us uh, the answer yes. So uh, it is uh, worth mentioning that to achieve all the advantages that we have shown before, is uh, specifically how visu the visual grounding of different concepts can facilitate uh, generalizing to uh, unseen relationship between concepts, or how the meta concept uh, 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 integration can allow you to resolve uh, the bias uh, in, in the visual le concept learning part. So the, the key idea here is to uh, make these two embeddings share. Like, that is, when we're answering uh, the visually grounded questions, like what's the shape of the red object, or when we are answering uh, meta concept reading questions, like uh, the red and the green describe the same property of objects, we are using exactly the same, uh, the same uh, concept embedding, the same uh, concept embedding in some latent spaces. And these uh, concept embeddings are optimized 
uh, from uh, both supervisions, both from the visual grounding, from the visual experience, and from just pure taxi experience, specifically uh, answering or reasoning about meta concepts. So um, to conclude uh, this talk, so I want to uh, um, uh, finally uh, uh, conclude the advantage of this proposed framework, the NSCL, the, namely the neural symbolic concept learning. So the framework NSCL can learn visual concepts from language with no annotation. So it has uh, the following advantages. First of all, it's very accurate, very high performing, and also it's very data efficient. And uh, it has a very good transferability to other tasks as well as the robustness. So the, the design principle between uh, this neural symbolic concept learning framework is, uh, first of all, we want to make explicit visual grounding of concepts with this neural symbolic reasoning process. And also, uh, we want to perform joint learning of concept language with some curriculum learning setting. And finally, uh, before ending this talk, I want to discuss some uh, certain limitations of this current framework, which suggest very future directions for seeing understanding, language understanding, and reasoning. So first of all, for the uh, visual recognition system, such as uh, detecting or segmenting individual objects and then recognizing their properties, uh, these still remain a major challenge to concurrent visual understanding uh, sorry, visual reasoning frameworks. On the right, we show a challenge case for detecting and recognize the attributes of objects in crowded situations uh, with a lot of uh, occlusions there. And also, um, uh, I, want to, I, want to, uh, I want to confess that the current uh, framework only, uh, they, they works uh, mostly for just like uh, visually grounded language that is generated based on some synthetic templates, such as in the Clever data set. So they still cannot really match the richness of human language. On the right, we show a challenge case for many parsing, like is there something you will see deep in wilderness? And uh, thirdly, so far, so most of the compositional visual reading models, uh, many papers, have been really focusing on this idea of conventionality of visual things and a reasoning procedure, such as um, uh, build, you know, having um, neural module networks that can, uh, that can be constructed for uh, arbitrarily complex questions. But uh, it is still hard um, for the natural language understanding part, the natural language understanding system to really generalize uh, to novel and more complex endurances by leveraging the knowledge learned from just simple and short ones. On the, on the right, we, I, we, I illustrate this challenge. So after training on a subset of the Clever dataset, which contains only very short and very simple addresses, so simple neural sequence to sequence model for semantic parsing usually just fail to generalize to parse more uh, complex addresses during tests. So to achieve such, to achieve the real compositional generalization as human could do, we should develop algorithms that are more aware of uh, such compositional structure for natural language. And finally, I want to uh, show um, uh, some possible extensions to the general neural symbolic framework. Specifically, um, in this talk, I have briefly mentioned that how this can be interpreted with, that, with other abstract reasoning processes. And also, uh, we all, uh, someone could also consider how to extend such frameworks to reason about you know, uh, spatial event, physical event, or even uh, human object interactions. And also, we want to understand the, uh, we want to reason about the causality of, uh, of videos. Like, what is responsible for the collision between the science and also the metal ceiling? And uh, you can, one should also consider how to extend such frameworks to reason about physics. In this example, I show uh, this question from the ADAPT dataset collected by Smith and all 2008, 2019. So, if now I ask you the question, so what, where is the ball? So, as human, we can, we, can, we, can, we can easily understand that. So the ball should, the ball should be behind this occluder because, uh, it, uh, because of, you know, we, we have this notion of object permanence and so on. And uh, we should also extend this uh, reasoning process, this neural symbolic reasoning framework to reason about people's intentions. On, on the right, I show an example from the VQ dataset uh, collected by Aguilar uh, et al. in 2015, uh, where the question is, what purpose does the thing other person has served? And the answer is shape. And also, in general, we want to reason with um, more common sense, like well, which child is most likely to be blamed for ruining this composition of photograph. So um, the answer is the child with head, her, his head turned. So uh, this is the little child on the, uh, which is like a second to the right of, uh, of the first row. 
So, and finally, we can, one should also consider how to extend such concept learning or reasoning frameworks to more complex planning so that we can actually interact with different types of objects, like how we can cook and serve the green block, or like how we can, uh, you know, move different objects, how we can stack them. So, um, with all this, uh, I would like to uh, thank all my uh, collaborators and, um, um, and uh, thank you everyone for listening. And now I'm happy to take uh, questions. And uh, I have seen um, many questions in the, uh, in the, in the, in the chat. So uh, let me just randomly pick some um, to answer. Um, so the, uh, the first question that somebody asked me is, um, uh, uh, is there any relationship between neural module networks and uh, graph neural networks? And uh, do you think uh, graph neural networks, surely uh, GNN, can learn these concepts uh, implicitly? Uh, uh, yes, there are definitely uh, 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 connections between uh, neural module networks and the GNNs, but I, I, I think these two concepts are kind of orthogonal to each other in the sense that um, GN actually is a, is a, is a network uh, framework for, uh, to reason about an you know, object and his and their relationships, while neural module network is more about how you can build the learning system, the reasoning process, uh, uh, you know, based on some uh, query input. So if you look at uh, the paper by uh, Hudson and Manning, uh, this like a neural state machine, they actually make a very nice integration of uh, neural module uh, frameworks or kind of inspired by these neural module frameworks and uh, combine it with, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, graph neural network based uh, reading processes. And uh, uh, the second question um, I'm going to ask, is, I'm going to answer is, um, uh, any possibility to jointly learn the concept of object existence uh, looks like uh, in, the, in the paper, a separate detection module is trained for that. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, yes, it is definitely possible. So, um, so there are, uh, speaking about this idea of like objects, so um, to some extent, like objects is, is are like a, um, uh, you know, no, no well-defined co concept actually for human because, um, you know, you can interpret this, uh, this um, bottle as, a, as an object as a whole, or you can interpret like, a, uh, like the, the top of this bottle as a separate object and so on. So um, there have been many trials on, on, their, on learning uh, the idea of objects uh, uh, from, uh, from visual data or from visual and language data, uh, specifically, uh, 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 you can you can imagine that you can you can set, learn to segment an object uh, by watching object moves or by uh, interacting with them. And uh, here, the concept learning framework actually provides an auxiliary uh, ways for defining object. Because if you if I ask you to reason about the object, you think like I ask you to count like how many objects are there, or uh, g like uh, give me the red block, and then you can probably also utilize such uh, visual uh, like visually grounded language input to help you to. Uh, uh, to get this, uh, this notion of object existence. Uh, 